Hi everyone, I'm Alex and this is Tank Tested. And today I want to share with you a long overdue video. My journey into recreating the Rio Negro River in Brazil. A biotope aquarium that won first place in the world. And then my follow up to that aquarium. In addition, I want to extend an offer to all of you to join me on a trip to the Rio Negro this January with Project Piaba. I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. So let's get started. I'm working on a film on the Rio Negro, and I wanted to get a couple of close-up shots of the main character of this ecosystem, the Cardinal Tetra. But getting those shots in the wild is challenging, so I wanted to create a set. This is the aquarium I created sometime in between 2020 and 2021. I entered a photo of this tank into the Aquatic Gardeners Association biotope contest and got first place. So the best biotope in the world, at least according to the one contest I entered it into. The key to this biotope and so many biotopes is time. This biotope took several months to look beautiful. Leaves break down slowly, and to get that sense that this is a lived-in habitat, those leaves need to start to decay. To do that, I dumped leaves into this tank and waited several months. And every two or three weeks, I added another handful of leaves. That's another part of a real biotope that you need to capture. All the Organic matter doesn't get added all at once. It's slowly added over time, and everything is at different stages of decomposition. When I added cardinal tetras, they came to life. And you can really see how beautiful cardinal tetra is in black water. The red of the cardinal tetra starts to disappear into the water column, and the bright blue stripe just pops. I think these are some of the most beautiful fish and a biotope is one of the best ways of displaying them. This tank was created in a 40-gallon breeder, but I didn't fill the tank all the way up. Instead, I only filled it up about 8 inches. That meant that I had 8 inches of water, and then I had a full 18 inches of depth. And that's how I got so much depth in this image. And as I said, I'm really happy with the result. But I thought it was time to create another biotope Aquarium, something that I could get slightly different shots in. And that's where this UNS 60P comes in. UNS sent me this 60P and two other aquariums earlier this year, and I've loved tinkering with them. And for this setup, I thought, I'm not going to fill this tank all the way up. Instead, just about six inches, and that should give me some really beautiful biotope shots. That meant I had about 14 inches in depth to about 6 inches in height, which is a really good ratio for creating a convincing biotope. Now, unlike my previous biotope, which sat there maturing for more than 6 months, I only had about a week to set up this tank because I wanted to enter into this year's AGA biotope contest. Unfortunately, that means that I couldn't wait for the tank to mature, so I had to go through a couple of other approaches. The first step was to come up with kind of a vision for this tank, and what I wanted to create were trees breaking through the water's surface, and then a bed of leaf litter underneath. This is a really common environment to see in the Rio Negro because it is a flooded forest, so little trees are often submerged, and just their bases are visible to the little fish that inhabit the flooded streams. That's the feel that I wanted to create here. So I needed to create some tiny trees. And what better way to create tiny trees than to use a dead bonsai? All of these little sticks are actually the trunk and branches of a bonsai that died in my backyard. I actually tried to convert a sweet gum that was growing in my backyard into a bonsai, but I transferred it into the pot a little bit too early in the season, you know, maybe in October rather than in December, and there was an unusually late heat wave and it dried out all the leaves and the tree never recovered. Lesson to not rush that process either. But as a result, I had this beautiful set of sticks that I thought, 
I can convert these into a little forest. So I glued individual sticks down to slabs of tile and placed them in the aquarium. Then I created a substrate layer with some pool filter sand, just enough that everything was held in place. I didn't fill it as high as I normally would because I knew that there would be an inch or two of leaf litter piled on top of all of that sand, and I wanted to still capture the base of some of those trees. After that, there's not a lot of planting that happens in a biotope aquascape, so all I had to do was find leaves. Unfortunately, the leaves that grow in Brazil are pretty hard to get access to here in the United States, so I had to go with something that was kind of a uh, middle ground, something that could pass but wasn't actually real. And in my experience, the best all-purpose leaf is the willow oak. Uh, the willow oak's leaves take a little bit of time to break down, but they're long, thin, narrow, and unremarkable. And as a result, they pass as a generic leaf. They're also quite small and narrow, which means that they increase the scale of the aquascape. Small leaves make the scape look bigger. It's kind of the same approach of using small plants to make a tank look bigger. We're just using dead plants. To age these leaves as much as I could, I took two approaches. First, I went out into the woods behind my house and looked for pools of water and kind of took leaves from those little pools. These were leaves that had probably been there for eight or nine months, so already nicely aged. In addition, I collected other leaves and put them in a pot of water and boiled them. And I boiled them for like 12 or 15 hours. And in doing so, you break down the leaves and you create this, this tea uh, that's terrible um, and smells bad, but uh, the leaves break down and you end up with a beautiful, organic, aged look to all of your leaf matter. Then I popped them in the tank, took them another day or two to settle, and then I had this. Between the two tanks, which did you like better? Now, at the start of this video, I promised to tell you about a trip I'm taking to the Rio Negro, where you can see a habitat like this in real life. There are still one or two slots available for that trip, so if you're interested, go sign up in the link down below. I'll give you a little bit of an overview, though. We're going down on a lovely boat with Project Piaba, which is a great nonprofit that is working to make sustainable fisheries possible in the Rio Negro region of Brazil. They've been going down there for about two decades and their work is really meaningful. We're going down to meet with some of the Pieberos, the fisher people of this region, and we're going to do some snorkeling and studying of the fish habitats that make up the Rio Negro. You'll get to see many of the fish that are in our home aquariums, as well as many of the fish that have never made it there and probably never will make it there. It's a pretty exciting opportunity for a fish lover. We'll also probably see some freshwater river dolphins, this rare, incredible dolphin that lives in the Amazon River Basin, and go to an aquarium fish festival, this crazy kind of carnival just for aquarium fish. It's a really special trip, and I hope that you can come with me. Now, the price tag is a little bit steep. It's $2,750 per person plus airfare. But for a two-week trip in the Amazon River Basin, on a trip that's really focused on fish and the natural world, that's a pretty great deal. I went on this trip once before, and it was amazing. We only have a few slots, but hopefully, one or two of you can come along and we can go on a journey together. I cannot wait to see you there, and I hope you enjoyed this little tour of biotope aquariums in my living room. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.